Welcome to the Conscious Sexuality Summit. I'm your host, Mariah Freya, and I'm so glad you're tuning in today. And I'm looking forward to introduce you to our guest today. He's known as the spiritual playboy, splitting his energy between the realms of sensual entertainment and conscious sex education. He's actually the creator of a Canadian lifestyle brand, Mondo Say, producing seductive dance events uh, to open-minded adults. But he's also a very contemporary voice in love, eros, and also relating. He's a faculty teacher uh, for the International School of Temple Arts. So he teaches spiritual, sexual shamanism around the world uh, through sexualrenaissance.com. And he's publishing videos on his spiritual and sexual journey as a man on the spiritualplayboy.com. His name is Frank Mondo Say. Welcome. So great to have you. <laughs> Hi, Maria. That's a beautiful introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you're so welcome. So, Frank, um, I researched a little bit and uh, more than 10 years you started hosting adult theme parties, which turned into yearly events, uh, for example, the Bal er Erotique, right, with over 1,500 attendees. And interestingly, over, over a year ago, you, you also started a personal journey into spirituality and ecstasy. And maybe you've started even before that. I'm not 100% sure, but you've definitely seen a lot and you've done a lot and you're really on that path of connecting to yourself as a man. And that's why I would really, really love to t chat with you about authentic masculinity. So. Um, yeah, let's r dive right in. So, so what is in in your experience in your own personal journey? What have you discovered around authentic masculinity? What what were your like insights on that topic? So I, I see it on a spectrum of two sides. Uh, one is like the essence of masculinity, and then what does it look like in form? So in the essence of masculinity. Uh, I learned through my own trials and tribulations that authentic masculinity uh, is one is three things. It's holding space, creating safety, and witnessing without judgment. Of course, always with the reflection of the feminine in front of us. So in, a lot of times, the unhealthy masculine that wants to uh, control and, and make things happen the way he wants will always be um, with have a, a, an aggressive or bullying or competitive spirit. Whereas, and this was a big part of my story as well, how do you make it in the world today? How do you make it where there's competition and greed and separation? That is like almost the natural um, reflection of that. But what I came to learn when I started on my journey about four and a half years ago, when I made my way through the sexual health, um, to the spiritual sexual shamanic experience in ISTA, was that I learned that as a man, to show up in the world, it's very simple. And it's less aggressive than we would think. And it is this idea of holding space, which means like being the space holder, allowing things to happen within your presence, creating safety so that life, creative force can actually emerge from this safety container and witnessing without judgment, meaning you don't have to come from a place of right or wrong, black or white, that all is as it should be and it all can play out. And when you Re meet life from this place, there is a much more ease than when you're trying to control the outcome. And if you look at the form aspect, for me, it's like, okay, so what is the masculine? The masculine is alive, it is penetrating, it is force manifest. And for me, the three points are um, purpose. Really know what you're here to do. If your purpose is uh, this idea of success and making money, you might find yourself tormented uh, find, uh, flying from one side to the other. But if you really find that purpose that resonates in your heart, you have the direction. And with purpose, you need will. Will, that, that desire to move forward, that penetrating force. And where is that will coming from? Is that will selfish or is it something beyond oneself? Mm. 
-hmm. And then finally, this idea of courage or valor, which is like bold uh, uh, daringness, bold determination, almost heroic. And that's what we need in life. And that's what I have. I'm in the place where I realize that I'm a divine being and I am a conscious creator in this reality. And that I have to be bold enough to uh, be in the places that uh, are what we're seeing as sketchy or, or an uncomfortable mm-hmm. and uh, bring some love and light there in order to create advancement in the world. So that's what I think what the masculine energy is about. What, what, why do you, what do you think is really the main struggle for most men that to, to really show up for their purpose, to you know, really be, come more from that authentic place that you just said that, that means like piercing through and being bold and uh, having balls, you know, but even you know, having that consciousness coming through all the time. Like what's the main struggle for today's man? Oh, the main struggle for today's man, uh, I think... Uh, we have a few things. The first thing in relation to, look, I think the masculine, the men, uh, we do what we do. We're, we're launched into action through meeting the feminine. We want to be seen. We want to be loved. We, wanna, we want to have that uh, connection. And one of the biggest issues men are having, uh, struggles, is this idea of our role. Uh, in regards to the feminine. The feminine, with their, they've come into this place of independence, but yet they still desire this uh, being taken care of. Um, they want this sovereignty. They, they, they're, they're struggling between sovereignty and devotion. So as a man, it's difficult to really show up with a woman who is... He- herself trying to figure out what truly she wants and sometimes when she's feeling that the traditional roles is what's calling her that she has this guilt so when men are facing this we are dealing with a lot of layers that we're trying to understand so we are having a difficulty understanding our role and what the true awakened feminine really how they want us to show up what what, what was for for you the the key moment when you realized that when you realized oh my gosh like i i gotta figure out my own role like i gotta you know show up for myself like what was the i was i was married i was in relationship for 14 years and when you're married in relationship you're you're you see an individual on the daily you see their struggles you see um their their hopes and aspirations but the conditioning of society and then that that internal struggle so for me the big aha was when i was trying to a show up as a strong masculine and create these the the space with the limits was received with um uh, um you know, anxiety or like, I need my freedom. I want my freedom. And then giving freedom, but women not, um, in my experience, having not really understanding, uh, what freedom is, that there is responsibility with freedom. So how does this all come together? And in the midst of that is sexuality. Mm-hmm. And, and for me, this is another struggle uh, the masculine is having is because what we understand as sexuality, what we are being taught from all the channels is a consumeristic aspect of sexuality. We see it from our, the marketing, whether we're selling beer or cars, we're using sex as the driving force of attention. If we're speaking, to, if they're speaking to women, they're using uh, an image of beauty to create lack so that there is a demand. So, and then there's the whole uh, spectrum of pornography, which is our visual uh, consciousness or our visual cues around what our acted sexuality should be. Mm. And then we don't have any um, place where it's a balanced, healthy uh, idea of what is the true potential of sexuality. So as men, we have this for, of course, men and women, sex is amazing, it's delicious, pleasurable, desire, There's no question everything we are moving from is at source there. But if we're looking at the source of what, how we are, we know sexuality, it is coming from a very deviated and perverted perspective due to the fact that we are using it as a primary focus to create consumerism. Mm -hmm. And so I think men want to show up for the feminine. I think men want to be lovers, great lovers, Casanovas and Don Juans. They want to give women ecstasy. But what we're being taught is that, number one, 
sexuality is in scarcity. So you got to hunt, you got to capture, you got to you got to bring through and then when you have that, then you're in this taking and feeding, grasping energetic because you don't know when the next uh, opportunity will come. But as a man who understands his sexuality, who is coming from a sexuality that understands that sexuality is far greater than just pleasure or uh, just uh, um, a, a hedonistic moment that sexuality can actually be restorative and transformative and what we do at the International School of Temple Arts with uh, this training that we offer is that we really take peop boys on a journey to becoming mm -hmm. priests and what is the difference in that is that we are boys when we go around with an unhealthy sexuality of grasping and taking and uh, seeing sexuality from the life perspective, uh, lack perspective. But we become priests when we bring an element of presence and of giving attention. Uh, the idea of let's, really let's look at this this presence that that key presence that consciousness like. Why is that the key to that authentic um, man, masculinity, that, that man within also myself, but also you, but, you know, being obviously a male in a male body, you also can act and role play that aspect even more and, and tune with that, that presence there more in. So, so tell me more about this key to, to really living, living masculinity more authentically. Right. So when you're coming from a place of conditioned sexuality, which is, uh, let's say, pornographic or consumeristic, you're often in performance. You're in the mind. We're, we're operating from the mind. What do I do? How do I act? How do I throw my hair back? How do I, uh, you know, eat her pussy perfectly? You know, it's like, what's going on here? It's all this mind stuff. But all this stuff doesn't really have to come. All that's being requested from a ceremony of sexuality or a sexual ritual is complete presence. It's the, the idea of um, coming into stillness. When we're in stillness and presence and uh, uh, eye contact, it is at that point where, where we start to connect with the subtle realms. So um, sexuality is often um, best tasted when we are surfing on these subtle realms. And the subtle realms is being able to connect with our energies, our, our life force energy that flows within us and, uh, and our partner. So when we are using breath, sound and movement, these are to me the three keys of conscious sexuality is you show up in presence, you show up with the idea of wanting to be giving, to take a journey of ecstasy, not to get to an explosive end, but to ride, ride these waves of bliss, building up, 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 and instead of just going for the money shot, that we take the big breaths to take a calm so that we could surf on this, you know, like the way I look at it, it's like being on a beautiful lake, sun is shining, we're surfing on the deliciousness. So <laughs> to me, it's presence, breath, sound, movement. And what I like to t tell men the most, the biggest key is when you're making love, um, get to know every part of her body. It's like, L allow the tips of your fingers, not your hands, but just literally the tips of your fingers, especially when you're getting to know a woman, is really let the tips of your fingers discover every crevice of the, the feminine body. And this way you could find that you'll learn that the erogenous zones are much more than just the obvious ones. And uh, that's where the magic is because that's where you are able to bring out the feminine. And when the man is truly bringing out the essence and the deliciousness of the feminine that's when we really feel most fulfilled or like we have totally shown up and done our duty as a man and and what do you recommend for you know exploring the partner what kind of inner attitude would you recommend you know to to really come from that authentic place and uh because so many men as you said have those boundaries have those things that, that they've learned they have to perform you know they have to be hard and strong and porn like and big cock and whatever you know but they like it's it seems so hard for them to just slow down and, and come back yeah just come back to that authentic really um yeah priest priest like 
place, right? So, so uh, what is really one of your number one practices to tap into this energy, to tap into this authenticness? Yeah, so for me, it's like really understanding that sexuality is a sacred, can be a sacred path. It could be profane and fun and pleasurable, and it could also be a sacred practice. And when we bring our sexuality uh, to the place of the sacred, we are really reaching to the core essence of what it is to be uh, in this embodied form, to, to be uh, on the altar of, sorry about that, to be on the altar of the deep church of creation, that we actually create our lives and that sexuality can be the prayer. So for me, what the, the practice is, is when I show up for a woman, I see her as the altar of which I'm praying on. Mm -hmm. um, praying is this attitude of gratitude. It's an attitude of generosity. Um, it's an, an attitude of grace. So when you're showing up, to the altar. So if you could picture the visual of a beautiful, naked, delicious woman in front of you and you show up at the altar and your thing is not to take and devour, but really to have reverence and, um, and, and gratitude for this opportunity and really understand that when your hands touch this body, it's like touching uh, the Holy Grail. Or, or what's at the center of, of creation. And so that we actually allow our divine being to pour out of us into this being and discover all the folds. And, and to me, what I love the most about being with a woman is as I uncover her, I find where there's deeper pleasure, where we don't get to see when we go from lit, lips to boobs to pussy to penetration. Mm -hmm. And, you know, lovemaking... When we go into sacred ritualistic sex, there's no time limit. Time ceases to exist. So for me, it's like, how do you set up your environment? Where are you making love? Um, are you creating a, a space that is reverent? Uh, are you rushing it? Or, or do you allow, give yourself the, the, the opportunity to, the luxury to, to take your time with it? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's about presence, also about humility. Humility, uh, for me, humility is a great process, a practice in being a full and complete man. And part of the way I get into humility is entering into nature and seeing how, you know, we become part of this. And secondly, is doing um, um, rituals that bring us our body into uh, humility that looks like could look for me it's like Native American sweat lodges mm -hmm. or some level of medicine where <laughs> your body and your beingness realizes that you're so finite so your gift to the world can be so much bigger if we tap into the spirit and the soul place rather than just the external physical tools we've been given uh, as our paintbrushes. What, what do you recommend to somebody who's pretty new to uh, spirituality to conscious sexuality and you know maybe a guy who's, who's still kind of in his very um, macho kind of uh, feeling but he feels there's something more there must be something more what do you recommend to this kind of person because I feel that's like where, where many men are at and how to how, how to um, you know uh, go beyond the comfort zone go out of that and um, yeah, and explore that more authentic part and, you know, go the, through those step, steps of, of grace, of, of self-love and, you know, um, really being humble in front of nature and connecting with nature. Yeah, I think the, the first step is really uh, to do research, you know, in those moments where we're home alone and we're really contemplating some existential uh, thing, it's like really just go on Google and start to search uh, topics that come to you, a thought process that comes to you, something you've heard that's stimulated. Go do the research and then combine that with where, like, 
a workshop or training or something like that and see what really speaks and when there's something that calls and talks to actually have the courage, that valor that I told, that, that heroic bravery of going beyond our, our limited ideas of what the potential is if we, you know, our fears about what is it's going to be weird. Just go do it. That's the first thing. Secondly is um, when we're doing more of this inner work is really to take the time to understand uh, our personal vulnerabilities, our sensitivities, um, where our fear, where we have fears, our true desires, and really start to understand these aspects of us. And this is that uh, that like culturally, we've been told not to act like a girl. Boys don't cry. Man up. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all terms uh, and, and concepts that take us out of our emotional body and we are beings we're humans so the emotional body is actually at the cornerstone of how we show up in our, in our life so if we don't understand our emotional body if we don't understand um, what makes us sensitive where have we had a wound or something from an ex-girlfriend or a mother or a sister that 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 triggers an attitude if we don't know that we go through uh, through life consistently reacting from a trigger that exists from another time and you're not showing up fully for the beloved in front of you in that moment mm -hmm. so and for yourself most importantly so for me it's like doing the introspection work and going for it and not looking at it from this place where I'm bad, I'm less than, oh my God, I'm pathetic, but more from, oh my God, here are all my opportunity places. Here is the thing that I just discovered that if I put some love and energy, attention, education, wisdom, knowledge, nurturance, tenderness, mm -hmm. if I put any of those aspects towards those places in myself, that are not full because of whatever reason, that I start to come to a place where I um, show up for myself in a bigger way. And when we could show up for ourselves in a bigger way, that means we could show up for a beloved in a bigger way. And for me, one of the, the, the key things to being a conscious, awake, hard, conscious, <laughs> mad, <Arr. laughs> is this idea of showing up. Because we're in a time. Could you just explain this a little bit more? Showing, showing up? up? Yes. Yeah, we're living in a time uh, where there's a lot of difficulty, there's a lot of confusion. So it's very easy when uh, something difficult uh, happens in our life that our reaction is that there's, it's like, um, uh, instant gratification. If the gratification is not here right now, that I could go all somewhere else and get it elsewhere. But this idea of showing up is that even though it's uncomfortable, even though we might have to get into a conversation that speaks truth, that's dirty, that might end up in separation, that we show up, we have that conversation because that is where truth is. And as long as two individuals that show up for each other always give each other choice, that there is always the opportunity to grow greater. As long as I give you choice, you could say, yes, you, Frank, you are not perfect. And I understand. And thank you for showing up with this uncomfortable conversation. But I understand that you're not perfect. And I choose to show up for you. But it's that choice of wanting to, to show up as well. So for me, I would say like, this idea of avoidance, this idea of deception, this idea of lies, this is all old paradigm. This is, these only create veils and masks and all these veils and masks make it more difficult to connect. And in essence, that's what every individual wants. They want the polar connection, the energetic polarity. I could be in my feminine, but Maria, you could show up in your, your masculine and I want that. I want you to show up because I could rest in my feminine energies and of my emotion and you could show up in your masculine and I need that and I want that and that could be flipped up any moment. So the idea is, is really don't be afraid, don't be a coward. Hey, man, this, this life, there's a lot of corruption, there's a lot of greed, there's a lot of separation, and there is a lot of love. Love is at the core. And, um, and the biggest invitation for people that is wa are watching is build your life based on love and not fear. And the invitation is really go learn what love is. I am in a constant uh, journey of discovering what love is. The love we've been sold, this idea of romance, Disneyland, happily ever after, 
this is not love. Love is a bit sometimes dirtier that you actually have to dig deeper and go beyond your personal desires, go beyond your personal wants in the moment, which is dominated by the ego and the, the need to, to, to justify oneself. But love is much deeper. It's a, it, I, I, I summarize love as an energetic of giving. My experience of love the way I could play with love is one directional and it's giving. And if my energy of, that I'm speaking of love is not in the direction of giving, it's not love. Mm -hmm. I also believe that if I give without expectation, that I know that when I give love, it's not a one-to-one -one ra um, ratio. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship. That when I give love without expectation, I can rest in the faith that universal law says I will receive love. Maybe not from the um, target of my desire and emotion. And that's what I'm saying. So when you're giving love with the idea of trying to target and acquire somebody, it's actually with expectation. So it's, mm -hmm. it's less. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's more of a lack or want or, or, or something like that. So all I'm trying to say is, uh, love is um, love is a trip, man, and and it takes work. <laughs> and, uh, Amen like, to that. <laughs> love looks like forgiveness and letting go and not holding on to story and having the courage to get hurt a, again, having the courage to show up with your open, blazing heart, and knowing that at any time that it could get stepped on and really still choosing to show up because you yeah. know by showing up that that is when we start to touch the sacred and when we are playing within the sacred it is now at that point with the consciousness that we know we could create anything we want so it's going from um, being in the unconscious where we are a victim where life is happening to us to stepping into the con conscious removing the blinders showing up for difficult situations and knowing that we are the conscious creator the good stuff the bad stuff and the ugly stuff so um, yeah that's why I thank you thank you Frank that was really powerful stuff that you just flowing through you you and um yeah i hope everyone is really enjoying this as well if if you want to learn more from frank or if you may want to even visit one of his workshops make sure you check out frank's website at sexualrenaissance.com and i can also highly recommend you to check out his uh the spiritual playboy.com website where he has really a lot of Uh, amazing videos with amazing people all around sexuality and exploration. So uh, just hop on the link below sexualrenaissance.com. And yeah, thank you so much, Frank, again. <laughs> this thank was you, wonderful. And I, I <laughs> this love that I just want to end with one thing that I always say to my, my viewers is let love free because as we let love free that is the only way we will change our surroundings stop keeping it hostage you love have it, enough love it trust let love free <laughs> this was the conscious sexuality summit with mariah freya as your host and yeah see you next time bye <laughs> <Mwah>. <laughs>